Hello, Charisma. Hi. Now, let's say you just finished recording a video of you singing, or playing the guitar, or even opening and closing blinds. Ooh, that'll be that'll be a real good video. So you recorded your video, so that means the video is either on your computer because you recorded it on your computer, or it's on a camera that you need to get onto the computer. So what you can do is if it's on your computer, just go to the folder where the video is, have that open, and then if it's on a separate camera, then you need to plug either that camera into your computer through the USB drive and then the cord that comes with the camera, or you can plug in the memory card if it has a memory card that you can access. You can plug that into your computer. Whichever one you have, um, once you plug it in, it'll show up on the side here. Go to computer and then select your file that you want. Now that you know how to get to the files so you can start editing, you'll need a program. So if you haven't already, um, just search Hit Film Express 3. Here at the bottom, get him, Hit Film Express 3 free. And so then you will create an account. I already did that. So um, you're cre you will create an account. Sorry about that. And then you should be able to download the file. So that'll download, and then you hit run, it'll install. Okay, now let's say you got that installed. So open it up. Oh, who's that guy? What? I thought this was an editing program. Don't worry, calm down. What you want to do is go to new. Now, if it's your first time loading up a program, it might have you sign in, so go ahead and sign in. Now, these settings might look a little daunting to you, but if you know what to put in, go ahead and put them in. Like if your camera says it's HD camera, well then it's probably um, either 720, like right here, 720, or 1080. Um, and even if you mess this part up, um, so you can put in the resolution of the camera right here, or you can find a preset here and select it. So I would say the most common one will be either 720p, um, 30 frames per second, FPS, or 1080, 30. So either one, if you mess it up, it won't be that big of a deal. Um, pick one. These things can stay the same. And so then you hit start editing. Here we are. We're moving. Okay. So once you do that, it'll look like this. Scary, daunting. Yeah, probably but it's all gonna work out. So, um, I'm first gonna go through the basic controls. So, over on the left here, you have different tabs. So this media tab is for like importing videos, pictures, sound into the program, so then you can edit it. Um, the effects, that we won't worry about right now. Controls, um, I think we'll barely touch on later. And then history won't worry about and then text will worry about later as well. So for right now you want to be on the media tab. And then you have the trimmer and the um, viewer. Now these once you bring something in will look will look uh, quite similar. But just to let you know the trimmer on the left here will be associated with media and then the viewer on the right will be your final project and I'll explain this a little bit when there's examples and then this right here the editor is where you will be combining all your different tracks clips audio pictures so the first thing that we need to do is get footage in here okay so you've got the video recorded of you singing playing the guitar dancing on the roof whatever it is and so you need to find that now. Okay, so let's say you have some videos that are recorded. I won't have the videos that you recorded for obvious reasons, so I'm going to use examples from uh, Grants Arts and Crafts. So here we have two clips and then a picture of wonderful Patrick. Now let's say you have just one of these files um, is what you want to bring into HitFilm. So what you will do is make sure you're on the media tab and then have your window be smaller like this and then you can see both this blank area here and your videos. 
So you will hold control on your keyboard and then select whichever ones you want. And then if you hold shift, it will select them all like that. You can also hold control and then deselect one specific file. So now once you have the files that you want selected, you can bring them in. So see like that, drag them over and now they're in. One good thing to do if you have a ton of different video files is to name them. So you can either name them in right here by hitting right click rename or hitting F2 on your keyboard, either one. Or you can do it in here, same thing, right click rename or F2 on the keyboard. Okay, so now that you have the files in, time to do set the in and out point of the video. So what this does is it pretty much um, is the beginning and then the end of the video. Now this is helpful because when you hit record on your camera, oftentimes at it, right when the video begins, you don't normally want that beginning part of your video because it's just, for example, you turning on your camera is set the end point where the video will begin and then the out point where the video will end. Now you can do that with the keyboard or you can do that with on-screen buttons. So what you do is you select the video that you want in the media tab here. So we want grant one file. And so we hit spacebar on the keyboard and it'll play through the video up here. Now it might do this slowly based on how fast your computer is. So what I sometimes do is watch it in this viewer over here. I double click on that to play it and then I get to see okay so around 30 seconds is where I want the video to start and around 35 seconds is where I want the video to end so then I can come into the trimmer and then look over here at this number so the 7 is the seconds and then the semicolon after that is the frames so I'll be looking for let's say 10 seconds so I'll drag it over to 10 okay. then I hit the in point which is right there it's I on the keyboard if you want to use your keyboard you can or you can just use the buttons okay so now that is where the video will now begin and so I play through alright um, that's good oh yeah he's raising his hands okay now that he's done raising his hands that's where I want the, the clip to end so I will set the out point which is this button right here or O on the keyboard I'll do O on the keyboard to show you what that does um, you can also slide it over and then hit the button again and it'll extend it. You don't have to like drag it over or anything. You can click and drag on the image up here and drag it into the editor over here. Now if this popped up I would recommend saying yes. Okay, what? Now there's two videos? What just happened? This video, like I said earlier, is your final video viewers. This is where what you export will show up over here in this viewer. This over here corresponds to what is selected in the media tab. So this is just for importing stuff and then this viewer over here if you slide it over is for your final project. So once you bring all your stuff into the timeline here you won't really be using this viewer too much. So if you want to you can slide this over to make and this down to make it bigger let's bring in multiple clips so then I can show you what cutting and then moving items around in the editor over here will look like. So what editing is is bringing in different clips, adjusting the volume, shortening, lengthening clips and then overlapping them and then compositing is like adding text, effects, like explosions, fire um, to your video and I'll go over text later in the video but the other stuff you won't have to worry about for right now this program amazingly can do some of that stuff but I won't go over it right now since I don't think you'll be using it right away okay so let's bring in another clip so we're gonna shorten this clip to what we want so let's play we let's say we play through it and oh he's laughing that's good so we'll set the end point there by hitting uh, this button play through. Now let's say I want this clip to stop right there. Okay, so I'll set the up point for that. Um, then you can drag it over. If you notice when I drag it over, it um, like 
sticks to the edge of the other clip which is actually most of the time very helpful but if you don't want the clip to do that you can click this button right here and it'll, it's like turning a magnet on um, the other thing I did you might have seen was adjust the scale now this is helpful when you have a ton of clips so if you zoom out you'll be able to see all of your project but you won't be able to make small minute adjustments so if you zoom in by either dragging this bar over or hitting this zoom in button you will zoom in on the clip you can also slide through your project now this white bar what is this this is the playhead so you can move this around this will all this will also allow you to set the point of where you're gonna make a cut so we have two clips now let's say I want to put this picture right in between this clip right here well if you try and drag it over all it did is it covered up this video and ended it and then made the picture now let's say you wanted this video to stop the picture goes in between and then continue once the picture is done so I'm gonna hit undo to get it back to where we were alright so what you can do is cut so you have these tools these four on the bottom we're not gonna worry about right now It'll, the main ones you'll be using are the selection tool and the slice tool now you can use short uh, keyboard shortcuts again if you'd like um, that sometimes can speed up things but in the beginning it's okay to just use the buttons so let's say um, I want Patrick over here to be put in right where the playhead is this white bar is the playhead so what I will do is I'll have to cut this clip and then move things over in order to fit Patrick in. So I can zoom in on the timeline here to see the clip more clearly. And then you can use the period and comma keys to go one frame at a time if you need to be that accurate. Okay, so let's say we want to put a cut right here where the line is. So you can go over to the slice tool and then right on the line click and then it divided this clip into two now I can move this clip around independently and this clip around independently now something you need to be cautious of is if you start making cuts you can go crazy or here I'm gonna undo this if you make cuts and then you think okay well I made that cut now I can just move this over right what well, you did. You were still using the slice tool, so you need. Sometimes, you might make that mistake. So just watch out for that. So we cut it, and so then you have to go back to the selection tool, and then you can move the file however you want. And that is pretty much the basics. So now what you can do is you can use the slice tool to cut, let's say, this part of the video out, and then I hit delete on the keyboard. I'm going to undo that. Um, or you can do that. Right click and then hit delete. And now you have this blank spot in your timeline. So you have this video blank and then the video continues. Well, that's because we just cut it out for obvious reasons. So what you need to do, sorry, you can click and drag and then move them over and then they're connected. And cutting and then moving all the clips over can be kind of annoying. So a shortcut is to use the ripple edit, which is this tool right here. And so what that'll do is lengthen or shorten the clip and then move every single other clip over. It'll save you some time. So for example, if I were to just shorten this clip normally like this, we'll now have to drag it back over in order for it, for the video to play through smoothly. So. Um, I'm going to undo that. So if I were to use the ripple edit and cut it like this, now it moved over. So what it did is it cut it and then automatically moved it over so then it'll play through smoothly. And 
that is the ripple edit. So that combined with just slicing, I find to be very quick and effective way to edit. That is pretty much the basic. There are some more kinds of slice tools and cutting tools which you can use which allow you to make fancy cuts that save you time but those I will not go into now. If you want to you can experiment with those. There's always an undo button so if you do something wrong it's not the end of the world you can undo it. Let's say you've cut your video how you want but it's kinda loud like you play through here and it's peaking. Now what is that? So if you look over to the right, this is your audio. Um, and so when it gets to red, uh, that's orange. There we go. That's peaking right there when the red part is like that. And that normally means the audio will be distorted and the quality will be lower because it's so, so at such a high volume. So what you can do is change the volume by um, make sure you're on the audio part right here and so you can drag it up and down so higher will be a louder volume and lower will be a quieter volume. You can also add multiple audio tracks. Use a video and an audio because when you're recording um, a video on your phone or a camera you're actually recording two different files, a video and an audio file. Um, so those will always be stuck together. You can unlink them if you want, like that, and then you can move the audio however you want. Now if you see I just moved that audio away from the video, so now this video won't have audio until right here, and it won't match up. So I normally keep those in the same spot. I keep those connected. You can add another audio track. You can add like 800 audio tracks. You can add like 800 video tracks if you want. But um, I'll show you how to add music. So if we bring this sound effect in, we can then drag it over like that. And now there's gun firing in my video. Woohoo! So you can add multiple tracks. So if you have like um, audio of you singing and then another clip of you playing the piano or I don't know, throwing a baseball. Um, you can um, layer all those sounds together. You can do the same thing with video, but I'll probably get into that later. Now, another thing you might want to know is how to add text. How you do that is you have to make a composite shot now. So what you do is you click on the clip that you want to add text to. So let's say this last part of the clip, we just want to add the end. Make the shot a composite shot. So you can right click and do that, you can hit control M or you can hit this button right up here. So you hit the clip you want to make a composite shot and then you make a composite shot. Now what this does is uh, it allows you to add layers and text is a layer so that's why we need to make it a composite shot. So this you will keep the same. Now you will see that here we have a tab and then here we have editor so if you want to get back to the editor where we were before you just hit the editor tab and so then all these other tabs will be composite shots that you make so if we want to go in and adjust this composite shot we click on this tab okay now this new timeline is the length of the clip so this timeline here is pretty much a zooming in of this clip, just this clip right there. So what you can do is when you're in the composite shot, you just go to the point where you want to put in text and then you hit the text button and then you create a text box. If you type something, hello, so what you can do is highlight it and then you can change the text, I mean the font, sorry, yeah it is changing the text though. Um, you can change the size. Let's make it 50. How about 100? Now you'll see that I, I'm able to change it like this without putting in a number. If you click and drag on the number, you'll be able to make it bigger or smaller just by dragging. <clears throat> and then you can also change the font. Alright, so now that you're done, 
just like with the cut cool cut tool, you need to make sure you um, don't click away with the other text box, otherwise you'll make a new one. I'm going to hit undo. Just make sure you go back to this um, pointer tool, selection tool. So now that you have that text, you can move it around because it's a layer. Remember this is a composite shot, <clears throat> so you have different layers. So you can have hello, so then you can make a another one right here, for example. Let's make it 21. 21. And there we are. Then you can select it. Say we want it orange. All right, now it's orange. Great. Um, <clears throat> now you might have another problem. Let's say you put that text in. Great. Um, but now we don't want it there the whole clip so what you can do is change the opacity or the transparency of the text so let's say we just want hello for the first part of the video the first part of this clip down here well what we can do is change the transparency so it's only visible for part of this clip so what you can do is go over here to this drop down arrow, <clears throat> transform. So if you change this number, you'll see that the opacity goes down. So it's more transparent. So whatever is behind it becomes more visible. There we are. So what you can do is keyframe. Whoa. Calm down. We're going to get through this. Keyframing is going to be okay. You're going to be able to do it, okay? Might seem a little complex, but you can do it. So let's say we want hello to be on. When I say on, I mean visible. Sorry. Visible for just the first part of the video. So the opacity is what? At 100%. So then when it's not visible, it'll be at 0%. So we need to transition from 100 to 0%. So we will make a keyframe here and then select um, opacity and change it to 0 and then we will move one frame over remember you can use the comma key to move one frame to the left or one frame to the right so we're gonna go one frame over and make the opacity 100 so pretty much what it did is from this part of the video the opacity is at 100 percent and then when it gets to this next keyframe it'll be at zero percent and then it never changes so it stays at zero percent so what happens is is we have text that's there and then when it hits the keyframe it isn't there because the opacity goes to zero and that is all the basics so now you can start editing but you also need to export you can't just have this file because otherwise you will only be able to watch your video in the editor yeah, not that great. So you need to export the video. You might have seen this button up here. So what you can do is hit export and then if you want to, you can dir export directly to YouTube, but I normally do H264. Sorry, H.264. Um and then upload it to YouTube. You can do either one, but I will show you um, H.264 this will say what part of the video do you want editor will be the whole thing and then composite shot that'll be just that one clip it'll just be this portion that we added the text to so um, go back to export and so you'll want to do the work area because that is where because when the work area is over that's when your clip is over because that's where the last clip is and then make sure you have video and audio here if you were able to figure out what the settings were you can put them in or if you hit um, yes to hit film changing the settings automatically these should be correct so you can for the most part leave these um, and then the bitrate I normally do around 10 to 15 and then audio you can leave that you can leave that and then you can hit export after you do this it'll ask where you want to save the file. So the video, um, let's say, 
I don't want it on the desktop. Let's say I just want it here on the hard drive. So we hit that, and then it'll start rendering. And then it'll give you an estimate of when it will be over. So here it says 33 seconds. Then what will happen is, where you saved it, you'll have that video, and you can upload it to YouTube. Um, so I'll show you that. Actually, no, I won't. You know how to do that. You're all good. Okay, that's it. Now, if you have certain questions, let me know. Um, ask me if you want something better explained in another video or just explain through text if you want. There you go. Now you can start editing. Have a good day.